So, um, here we are as an essential employee and stuff. Um, wanted to do something a little bit more fun today. A little bit, I know, the guy who always does nothing but tell people that they're stupid and that uh, just complaining about everything and anything does going to do something fun. Well, about a year ago, um, maybe more than that really, I did a countdown, a top five of um, Christian rock albums. And uh, Skillet representing up on top, probably the most uh, well-known uh, kind of Christian rock band that's been. And so that was them uh, up on top of that. And I wanted to come back through there because I've been thinking about, I think about a lot of stuff. Uh, unnecessarily deep or whatever. And so I was thinking about what is the greatest Christian rock song ever written. Christian rock song ever written. And I puzzled on it and I puzzled on it. It's like, you know, you lay awake at night. I work nights, so uh, when I'm on my days off, I tend to like, have trouble getting myself uh, to sleep and things. So think about it. Well, it wasn't enough just to think about it. I started actually creating like a spreadsheet of like artists and albums and songs and stuff, so all these things, and I think I've narrowed it down. And so here's just kind of a loose criteria that I'm using. Number one is kind of the significance of the artist, the album, or the song itself. Uh, so it could be that it started a trend. It could be that it was about a certain moment in time uh, or responding to a certain event in time. It could be that it's I, any number of things. And then the other thing is just obviously subjective. It's my personal opinion. You can have your own. And then, um, as well as kind of where it was in that, like artists and that uh, kind of the genre hierarchy, the, uh, kind of it's a development arc and so forth. So without any further ado, let's go with number five. Alright, um, number five is Cutlass, and if you've never heard of Cutlass, um, you've probably heard them a lot more on, like, K-Love, Air One, because um, simply, like, even though they started off strong, and they started off really hot um, with their breakout signal, Your Touch, from their, their kind of debut, their self-titled album, they started off there, um, they really have, they kind of, I mean, they sold out, honestly, is really the only way to describe it. They didn't stick with that same signature sound that made them popular, um, but in the middle of all that, before they started, like, the Christmas sweater um, album and stuff, before they went there, they came out with an album called Hearts of the Innocent, and on that album was a song called Shut Me Out, which I mean, just uh, slamming bass lines and just uh, just an incredibly well, just well-crafted, um, sh kind of short, on the short end song, and just, it's definitely a classic, it's still on every single one of my playlists, my workout playlists and everything, great, because like I said, I wasn't even going to include them as a band. I wasn't going to include them on this list. I didn't include them in the album discussion uh, before because simply um, they lost it. They lost the mojo, or at least they started chasing mojo that they really didn't have any business in, I'd say. And the Christian rock album landscape lost a significant monolith as that was in there. So that's five. Now we'll talk about number four. Number four is uh, was harder to place for some reason. Number four, and there's several bands that I felt like it could be there. Several albums that were like, man, it kind of deserves some representation, but it wasn't. But 
ended up settling with a band it's called Killer, which if you haven't heard of them, they started off like they had a really kind of New York more or less rise um, with sort of, I guess, once Fireproof came out, which was their second studio album, and then uh, came back with Where Do You Go From Here, which is where this song is from. It's called Bring Me Down, and it's their number one. If you're going to rank all of their songs, Bring Me Down, probably second would be For the Love of the Game, which is the title track from what is probably their best album overall, and then probably everything from The Reckoning is probably how I do their top three. But Bring Me Down is amazing, which, by the way, I'm going to do my best to try and find um, the, if they have music videos or if they're, um, I'm try to find some links, put them down in the sub or uh, the uh, description for you. If you've never heard of these bands, you've never heard of these songs, you'll be able to kind of experience some of music, perhaps. So that's uh, easily, like, uh, they went through a lot of controversy as a band because they were big time in advocating against the consumption of pornography. And there was a lot of blowback from that. People saying, like, why are you even bringing this up? Why are you talking about it? Why are you whatever? And so it hurt them, at least from their standpoint. And so that's where uh, a lot of the kind of lyrical fodder from the album, Where Do We Go From Here, came from that controversy. And it really, difficult subjects, but they handled it well. And uh, one of my personal, kind of personal favorites. That's four. Now let's talk three. Uh, Three, I had no choice but to go with this band. Um, it's the first one that came to my mind when I was thinking about this slot, and it's Thousand Foot Crutch. And they've had some sick, sick songs, but I didn't come into them until later, because when they first debuted, their, their kind of launch track, which was Puppet, which almost made it onto this list, was amazing. I mean, the opening of that song kind of it did a lot to shape where Christian rock music was going to go in the future, but their follow-up with Phenomenon, just, I wasn't digging it. I wasn't there for it. Um, all my friends, like, they super were into it. Anyone that was homeschooled, anyone that went to uh, youth or any kind of Sunday school, like, you all know who that was. And so they would dig it and they play it all the time, but I just, I wasn't there. But when they came out with Art of Breaking, boom, it exploded onto the scene personally for me with a song called Move, which is my number three pick. Amazing song, incredible the way that it's shaped. And as far as their band, like they deserve a lot more respect. I, I know that they like basically kind of put them in the position where they could do anything they wanted. Trevor McNevin, who's the lead man from there, uh, jumps off, does FM Static, definitely Maybe, which was kind of weird, and then t uh, sidecarring with Manifest and Lecrae, KJ52. Basically, he could do whatever he wanted, lyrically, whatever he wanted, artistically, and I think that the Christian music landscape has been forever um, kind of solidified by that song and that album so which did actually get a nod in my previous video which i'll try to find that one as well try to dig that one up it was a long time ago but that's three number two um number two um i struggled with a lot more because i wanted to i kept switching one and two back and forth as well as in and out with their particular uh, bands um so number what I ended up with was Skillet and Rebirthing. And why Skillet? First, if you don't know who Skillet is, I don't know what rock you've been living under for the last two decades. They've been in rock for 20 years, and they've toured with Korn, they've rocked center stage at OzFest, like they've been around. They've done some amazing work. Um, they deserve way more respect than they get. Um, I've actually had people ask me like, because I used to have uh, like a sweatband kind of thing. It had Skillet on it. And people would say like, are you like actually a Christian or are you just a fan of Skillet? And I'd say, well, both. 
and it would lead to some interesting conversations, places that we would go with it. But great band, great people. I mentioned John Cooper, who's the front man of Skillet, just recently, and the thing about Marty Sampson and um, Faith in the Spotlight. And um, they're incredible people. And this song is like, there's a lot that could be mentioned for them. Collide, which kind of created the really popular level of. Uh, of Skillet, like where they really burst on scene, best kept secret secret for people like me that are OGs with them, Alien Youth, um, and but as far as their when they started getting into like the really well orchestrated, a lot of strings, a lot of stuff with synths and stuff, when they started getting into that kind of kick, rebirthing is kind of as the the cream of the crop for that era from Comatose, and uh, it was just amazing. Awake. All of that rise like they wouldn't like uh, with rise sick of it all that stuff would not have come along if they hadn't released the video as well as, as a single the song uh, rebirthing and it's really kind of created who they are now as uh, artists and the world is better for it that's two and before I get to one, let's do a little bit of an aside with some honorable mentions that deserve to mention that almost made this list over and over again. I already mentioned like Puppet from Thousand Foot Crutch, Collide, um, just so many of those songs, um, Whispers in the Dark, and uh, some of those were like a lot of emotions and a lot of just amazing things. Um, one that deserves another mention from a different band that didn't make it into this list is P.O.D.'s Youth of the Nation, which if you don't know who they are. I especially don't know who you were, like, welcome back to the world from the coma you've been in. But they're amazing. Uh, they used to be, at least. They've kind of fallen off really deeply. They haven't done much since they uh, broke away from Atlanta, uh, Atlantic Records. But, I mean, they had a... Uh, kind of sponsor or promotional track with the movie uh, The Matrix series uh, by the Wachowskis. The, uh, but Youth of the Nation from their Satellite album, which is their number one album. I don't think there's any debate about that. Uh, basically, uh, was written in the wake of, or kind of responding to a lot of the emotions of the Columbine shooting and kind of uh, is where we are right now. It's one of those songs that no matter what, when you're listening to it, it's always relevant. And instead of going after like the personal story angle, the way like Michael W. Smith did in the wake of that tragedy, they went instead and just kind of going after the emotions of it. And so talking about some hard things about sex and about suicide. And there's some debate about the second verse or this like two and a half verse, this uh, third verse maybe that it might be actually talking about the shooter, not suicide. So it's interesting. There's a lot of debate about it. There's a lot of, I mean, just, it's an incredible song. I'll probably drop that one down as, as well. Um, deserves a listen. No, no matter, even if you don't like Christian music, if you don't like Christians, if you don't like rock music, it's worthy of, an, of a listen. Another one from POD would be um, Goodbye for now um, and then will you uh, alive south town like they've got a lot of tracks that almost made it into this list i mentioned cutlass is your touch almost got there because it, it shaped a lot of what music is or at least rock music would become in the christian spheres um, the disease and the cure by cutlass uh, some others that are uh, 12 Stones has had some good songs. If you don't know who they are, I, I'm way deep in the list now as far as stuff that got cut that almost made it. But without any further ado, let's talk number one. Number one is very simply Fully Alive by Flyleaf. Now, it very narrowly edged out Skillet because obviously Skillet is an important band just in Christian music. It's an important band in music in general. So why Flyleaf? Well, Flyleaf, I think you could say like it owes a lot to the existence of 
Skillet. Like they, you can feel a lot of influence by of Skillet in their music. But there's one key instrument of that the 90s to the mid 2000s kind of did for rock, and that's women in rock. Of course, Skillet's had a drummer, uh, Corey Cooper, being women uh, for a long time, and of course Pat Benatar, Janis Joplin. Like women have been in rock for just about all, the entire time it's existed, but they've always been towards the margins. They've always been kind of off to the side. They're, though, though they're there. They've never been near the center of any conversation talking about the greatest, the best, the cream of the crop when it comes to rock music. If you're talking about rock, you're talking about Metallica, you're talking about Slayer, Pantera, um, any of them, like just women don't really come into that picture very often. But when we're talking about Christian rock in the 90s to about the mid 2010s, you couldn't have this conversation if you're not talking about Flyleaf, Fireflight, and like uh, obviously there's Avril Lavigne that would come along in the 90s, and Taylor Swift kind of played with kind of a rocky sound for a little while. Carly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, some of these, they're they're more so off in the country angle, and a lot of Christian music is very heavily influenced by country, gospel, bluegrass, and so they kind of stayed over there. But with Avril Lavigne, and then um, Flyleaf. Evanescence, you had them actually coming out of the margins and into the center. And Lacey Stern, soon, or Lacey Phelps, uh, Phillips, when she came along as the front or uh, front, a lead person, whatever you want to play, lead singer, but lead vocalist of Flyleaf, like she really brought not just rock, but also a lot of uh, influence into breaking some of that stigma about things like mental illness, suicide, like depression, and the lyrics that are in there, like Memento Mori, which got a nod in my previous video, um, deserves a lot of respect, a lot of artis artismanship, and it's just an incredible uh, song. But Fully Alive is the one I picked. I could have picked as well, I'm So Sick. I could have picked Breathe Today, which was their kind of like landing. Uh, kind of in the spot, their spotlight song uh, that kind of brought us, brought them into the main center of the stage. Like, there's a lot of out there. I didn't even mention Red. I didn't even mention Decipher Down or some of the other bands that I really, really love that deserve a lot of, uh, that deserve a shout out as well. But those are my top five um, for this. And I um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have opinions, like you have different top five, you have a different top ten or whatever it is, I'd love to see it and I'd love to talk about it because I love music, I love talking about music, and especially I love listening to music. Especially if you've got different songs or you've got different bands that you'd like. I love to hear new stuff uh, and uh, let me see it.